Hi there, my name is Ben Wright. I'm the second trumpet player in the Boston Symphony. And today I would like to do a video for BSO Homeschool about Leonore Overture Number no. 3 by Beethoven. So this is one of the most common excerpts ever asked in auditions. Uh, I would say probably starting from middle school uh, through professional auditions. So it shows a lot to the committee, whoever's listening. Um, it shows sound, it shows phrasing, um, that kind of thing. I'm going to try to say um as little as possible, but I'm not a videographer and I'm definitely not an actor. So I'm trying to imagine I'm explaining this to a captive audience. I guess that's what we are now as a captive audience. So I have here my music stand. I have my notes. I don't have the music in front of me, but I have it memorized. I have a spittoon, which is really important. Either a spittoon, a piece of newspaper, a trash can. What you don't want if you're a kid at home with your parents is to put the spit on the carpet because they're not going to like that. Yes, it is condensation. It's not spit, but you need something for the spit. Okay, that doesn't have anything to do with excerpts, but we're going to... We're going to go back to the excerpt now. So I'm going to play through the excerpt first, and then we're going to talk about some points on how to practice it. So that's the first call. So it happens the first time in the overture, and then it happens later in the overture. Okay, so we played through it twice. Uh, I will say that the overture is a lot more exciting to play as the offstage trumpet player than the opera. I was lucky enough to play the opera offstage part when we did this piece with James Levine maybe 10 years ago. And the introduction in the overture is really exciting. So anytime you play an excerpt, you want to know what is an excerpt from. So you want to go online and listen to a great recording. Um, there's a really great website for what I would call brass forward, brass forwarding excerpts. Uh, when you just listen to the excerpt played uh, in the orchestra and not the whole piece, but you should listen to the whole piece. Um, that website is trumpetexcerpts.org. Um, there's some excellent examples uh, of this um, excerpt, including a fantastic German recording that I had never heard. Um, so I don't know who's playing that, but you sound great. Uh, and then of course there's, there's the venerable, uh, Adolf Herseth from the Chicago Symphony, principal trumpet for 350 years or however long he was there. Um, that's also a great, uh, recording on that website. So you want to listen to the whole piece. You want to listen to the excerpt and then you come back and you figure out, okay, well, how is this supposed to sound? What's the style? Well, at its most basic, it's the fanfare. So uh, in the opera, I believe it signals the, the coming of nobility, uh, the approach of nobility. So it happens twice. So as the nobility get closer, the second call generally should be played a little bit louder with more insistence, maybe a little bit more um, speed. Um, there's no marking on the piece about a cello rondo, um, and there's certainly no marking in the piece about subito double tempo. Sometimes you hear people play
I'm not a big fan of that. It's not really that big a deal. I'm not a big fan of that. I like the idea of it being in a tempo. So the first thing I have students do is sing. And my colleagues, if they're uh, watching this, will laugh at me like they normally do when they see me teaching a lesson at Symphony Hall. I make my students sing. And there's lots of reasons for it. Mainly for me, it's be because it's really helped me with my production and air movement. Uh, we can talk about that more later, but for now, I'll just sing it the way I sing it. I sing it and conduct it. So you should be able to follow it. It shouldn't be any quick changes in, in tempo. Um, so this is how I would sing it. Dun, da, da, dun, dun, dun. I try to include as much of the phrasing as possible with the singing. I try to breathe in the same spots that I do when I play uh, the trumpet. Okay, so before I started to play the excerpt, originally, not just now because I was just talking, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I was thinking about what happens in the orchestra before. So it goes... So this is a very exciting introduction, right? Okay, so in an audition, what do you want to show with this? Well, it's not like a loud excerpt. Um, it's a sound excerpt. So it should be proud. It should have the right style. But it shouldn't be like deafening, right? So just like a strong forte, like like a forte you can hold in the palm of your hand. So it's not like, oh, you know, like you're trying to play like louder than you possibly can. That's that's not the point. Ideally, you want it to be your best sound. And often in many of the auditions that I took, it was the first thing that I played. So I'm just going through my notes here. So we talked about singing it. We talked about tempo. Oh, you may have noticed when I sung the excerpt, I ended the long notes with an N. Uh, I like that because if I end it with a hard H, like da, 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 it gets chopped up. And you want it to all be basically one idea. So if I have a big break in those rests, or if I breathe in both of the rests, which you don't really need a breath after two beats, the first rest happens after two beats. If you do that, then it gets chopped up and you want it to be one musical idea. So, for instance, if I put a hard H on it, I get something more like this. Now, I'm being a little bit, uh, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but if you're thinking, da. Da, da, dun, dun, dun. So you, you play the half note until beat three. And then do the same thing with the next half note. Take a big breath and off you go. I do a single tongue. And I switch somewhere in there to double tongue. Um, everybody has a different speed of single tongue. Uh, my, my colleagues, uh, Tom... Rolfs and Tom Siders both have way faster single tongues than I do, and Mike Martin and I have slow single tongues. So we just figure it out as we go. Okay, here's the exciting intro. Don't need to breathe in both rests. Sing it fanfare. Okay, so um, when you sing, it's important when you sing it. So you sing it and you play it. You sing it and you play it. Now, when you sing it, if you hear da, da, if you hear more tongue than you hear tone, that's not right. So the best way to do it is to go over to a piano, if you have a piano, and plunk a note. Because on the piano, it's just instantaneous sound. For trumpet, it's this complicated coordination of the air comes sweeping out and you articulate it just as it's coming out. So ideally, you end up with something like this. So the last thing I'll tell you about the singing was that when I was a student at Juilliard, or actually
actually, let's just say I was a student at New York City because I didn't really like the school, but I loved my teacher. Mark Gould was a fantastic teacher for me. And he made me walk around New York City singing things. So I would be walking down the street and I'd be, dun, 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 pictures of an exhibition or, dun, 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 dun. And I can't really walk around that much here, but I'll try it here. So, dun, 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 dun. So if you're practicing at home, your parents and your siblings will think you're crazy. But that's okay, because you'll become a better trumpet player in the process. So that's Leonore 3 and 5, or I don't know how long I've been talking. It feels like a long time. Hopefully it didn't feel like a long time for you. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I hope that you and your families are staying safe. And um, all the best from Newton, Massachusetts. <laughs>